Okay, good afternoon, everyone. As promised, I'm going to start uh, going over... I'm uh, going to start doing some regular YouTube videos here so that you guys can uh, can learn how to do some, some charting and some trading on your own. Um, today, we're going to go over support and resistance and uh, also using the Fibonacci tool. Uh, today, I'm going to be using the TradingView app. I, I really like the TradingView app a lot just because it's nice and clean it's got a lot of nice features um so let's just let's just dive right into it and uh i'm also going to go over some names uh using some of these uh technical analysis techniques um some of the some of the names that uh some members of our uh, telegram group gave us um so first let's let's do some uh charting of some hors or yeah some uh horizontal support and resistance lines so basically what i'm looking for here is any any time the price pivots right so you can kind of see here you know bp came up and hit this level and then sold off right <clears throat> same thing here price ran up hit this level sold off price ran up here sold off price ran up here sold off okay it's even better if we can find multiple points in time so like here's a good one right here so i'm gonna use this horizontal line right here okay right right here you can see price tag this level a couple of times in the past so that's that's a good price level for us um and i do like to now this one doesn't seem to have well we do kind of a gap fill there, so. But I do like to take the most recent pivot as a as a support or resistance level. Okay, so. So now we've just plotted two levels here. Um, and now you can kind of see we're just kind of getting above this level here. There's nothing really to reference to here. We're kind of in no man's land. And we can go back in time and see, you know, price has touched this level multiple times up at 36 so i mean that's that's a possibility we run up to that here um let me pull out the fibonacci this is where fibonacci's are actually really important and really helpful so anytime you're using the the fibonacci tool you're basically just looking for the most recent swing high and swing low so here's the most recent high okay so click on that here and then I'll take the most recent swing low down here. And get that right there. Okay. <clears throat> so this gives us a good target here. Um, so a lot of times you can see that price will run up after clearing this level. Uh, like I said, once it gets in this no man's land, it kind of gives you a nice target. So a lot of times you'll you'll look for the 127 um, Fibonacci extension or the 1618 um, so you can see right here, we did run up to the 1272. This red candle did kind of hit that and then sold off. And then the next day, it just busted right up through that. So we, we might actually see price hit this 33.35 level here uh, in the near future. So that, that would be a good spot to target. Um, and if you're long, to take profits up there. Okay. So let's, uh, let's move on to the next ticker that was suggested okay microsoft okay so let's zoom out here a little bit okay horizontal line so right here you can see price has touched this level multiple times and reacted to it multiple times so price ran up here sold off ran up to this level again sold off ran up to this level again sold off and then it came up and it finally broke through that and we've been trading above it and as you can see we did recently drop down to that level look at this big red daily bar here bounced down to it and then kind of came right back up from it and we even uh, bounced off of it right here so these these previous resistance levels typically become support after we break through them now we've got a couple other levels here price tag this level a handful of times and then this level uh, right here okay um one thing on the trading view app that i like is it's got this uh magnet 
so you can make it a weak strong uh, or you could disable it so um as you can see you know this doesn't really react it just kind of places it wherever i want to exactly place it but if i put the magnet back on and i do this it will actually magnetically attach to any wicks that i'm nearby so i like that feature a lot but that's you know, personal preference um okay so let's see now let's also use some fibonacci retracements on this because this also could have given us a good target i think so again, take the most recent swing high and then put it down to the recent swing low, okay? So, you know, this is for, you know, if we're trading in this range right here, okay? So let's say we're on this day right here and, or even, you know, this day right here, you know, price is coming down, testing this previous resistance, now support, and then again, this can give us a target on the bounce up. If this is really a down move, we're going to get a retracement up and then another move down. So as you can see, price came down, hit this previous resistance, now support, and then bounced up almost to the 50% retracement, um, but did end up hitting the 382 and then sold off from there. You can see it. it went a little bit above it rejected down and then on the next day a little bit of a gap up but sold off again so you know a lot of times on these uh, oversold bounces I, I do like to target the 50 percent retracement as my target but depending on how weak the bounce is it might only bounce up to the 382 retracements um, sometimes as high as the 618 let's go over to nvidia Okay, so I've already plotted some lines here. <clears throat> so trend lines is another thing I like to use here. Um, so basically, you know, again, you're just looking for uh, pivot points uh, in the past where price reacted to, right? So I just took this point here, this point here, and then this most recent low right here. Um, now you can see nvidia has been kind of trading down and this is these down these trend lines are kind of good for when price is sloping down too so you know take this most recent spot right here and then boom like that okay so if nvidia nvidia runs up from here i expect price to possibly reject from here and then it might come all the way down from this trend line down to this trend line here now let's see if we can plot some more levels here um okay so again you can see price reacted to this area multiple times uh here 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 the more times price reacts to the level the better um, and i always like to kind of zoom out you know you always want to start zoomed out and then you can kind of zoom in I, I like to start either on the weekly or the daily um, and then you can kind of zoom in you know if you want to go on the hourly chart sometimes you can see these pivot levels a little bit better um, you know you could possibly say well this is a this is a level here because we reacted here 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 uh, here and here okay but I like to start mostly from the higher time frames and then you can kind of zoom in so most most of these time frames i'm going to focus on the daily here because i don't want to make this video too long-winded um okay let's see okay so let's let's give you a couple of examples here using the fibonacci retracement um so just just to kind of show you where price reacted um, on some of these bounces here. So here, you can see from this recent swing high to this swing low, price bounced up big time here. I mean, NVIDIA went up 7.49% in one day. That's nuts. Um, hit this 50% retracement, and then the next day gapped up to that 618 retracement and then sold off big time from there. Came right back down to this uh, 272 level here. Um, and then it found support again, 
and then, then let's let's do another Fibonacci retracement. Okay. So took the swing high here, the swing low here, and then look where we ran up. We ran up to the 50% retracement here and then got rejected. Next day, gap up a little bit, hit that 50% retracement, and then sold off again. Okay. So these Fibonacci retracements really do a good job of kind of just giving you a reference point um, on where to take profits, you know, just, just where you expect price might go. All right, what's the next name on our list here? <clears throat> okay. So everybody, you can see I have a trend line here. Price reacting here and here, and then I have a support level or resistance level here. So you've got price reacting here multiple times in this area and in this area. Okay. Let's zoom in a little bit here. So here's another level right here. You can see price touched this level multiple times, about one, two, three times there. Okay. And then price also reacted to this level multiple times here. So you've got one, two, three, four, five times that price touched that level. Okay. So we've got another level right here that price seems to react to. And then obviously this level up here. And then I always like to get one right at the peak, too. Okay. Now here's a nice area to draw a trend line. Boom. Right there. Okay. So we might see we might see AMD bounce. Nice little bounce off this support here. Might see it bounce up somewhere over here. And might get rejected by the trend line again. But let's take a look at the, the Fibonacci here. Boom. Okay. So this is somewhat of a fake out here. So we took the swing high here, the swing low here. Well, okay. So price came down here and then bounced up to the 50% retracement. And then sold off. So again, Fibonacci provided a nice little target here. You know, if you wanted to take some longs down here at support, and then you'd be looking for 147 on the bounce, which that's a nice move. I mean, you're looking about 130 to 147. That's a 17 point move. Big money on some calls if you manage to play that. Okay, and then it sold off from that 50% retracement. So, you know, possibly a good uh, area to short if you want to you know if you're playing this is just a bounce an oversold bounce with continuation to the downside um, it didn't end up testing this low again until later here um, so now we ran up back above that 50 percent retracement cleared the 618 retracement and it also looked like we we're about to break above this trend line here and above this 154.66 resistance, and then just got kind of sold off, and that was December 28th. So a lot, of, a lot of stuff, a lot of price action was a little murky around that time period anyways. Now let's get rid of this Fibonacci. Okay, let's take this swing high to this swing low here, and again, look where price rejected from. So from this swing high... To this swing low, price ran up to about the 50% retracement and then sold off in one day. That went from 140.76 down to, oh my gosh, 131.63. So quite the move here on AMD. I mean, that was it was down 3.44%. Um, and then eventually on the next day, on Friday, found support at this level here, the 131.77 level that we plotted, right? So this pivot point here, you know, possibly, you know, if you wanted to play the rejection here off the 50%, 
you know, where is it going to reject to? So what was the most recent pivot point right here at 131.79? So you could have been looking for that level on Friday for a possible bounce. Okay. Let's get rid of that. Okay, what's the next one? Neo. Okay. It's another another descending trend line here. Um, yes, yeah, so the price ran up to a pivot here, got rejected, ran up here, got rejected, came back up again. So we've got three touches here, here, and here. Okay, and it couldn't quite run up to here. So, I mean, this is clearly a significant level right here. And this is kind of like a descending triangle type look here because you have lower highs and it's testing the same support level. One, two, three. And then on that fourth test, it sold right below that, right? Now it's kind of just chopping around between these levels right here, between 33, 17, and 28, 44. You can see those numbers over here on the right side of the screen. Um, again, price kind of reacts up to this level right here. We could probably find some other levels up here. Price tends to react around this level right here. Multiple touches here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. A lot of times price reacts to this 42, 62 area. Okay. Mm -hmm -hmm -hmm. All right. Tesla. Oh, wait, let's, we'll try and do a, a Fibonacci retracement on this, too. All right. So, most recent swing high. Come on. Okay, so you see price ran up to that 618 this time. And even peaked above it a little bit. So, somewhat of a fake out here. Um, you know, you could have taken a short here... And you, know, you might have gotten, most likely would have gotten stopped out here. Um, and then it eventually did sell off from there. Um, let's see. What the Fibonacci retracement looks like from this level right here. Mm, come on. Okay. Mm. Okay, so you can see it ran up to oh, come on. it ran up to the fifty percent retracement on this pullback, which is around forty three point sixty four, and ran up to there and then got rejected. So that that would have been a good short right right there. Now I left this um I left this Fibonacci from before up here just to see if I could see um, some confluence, as it's called. Um, shout out to Carolyn Borden in her book, Fibonacci Trading, for uh, teaching me this one. So actually, you can kind of see here, and this kind of gives you a little bit um, stronger levels, right? So Fibonacci confluence is basically anytime you take multiple Fibonaccis and they overlap, it's, it's somewhat of a stronger level. So you can see from this previous Fibonacci, the 382 perfectly stacks up with the 50% retracement from this level. So, you know, this tells me that this is a really strong level, okay? So this kind of gives me a little bit more confidence if I wanted to short here. I'm, I'm pretty confident that price wanted to re would react at this level, so... You know, maybe it wouldn't get like a hard rejection from it. Um, maybe it just kind of chops around or sells off a little bit. You know, so this might be a good area to sell a uh, call credit spread, right? Where you just basically make money as long as the price stays below this level. Okay. And then, okay. So let's test some Fibonacci levels on Tesla here. Okay. It's a swing low. 
Swing high to swing low here. It didn't really give us much here. Um, it did kind of, on this day, it did actually get rejected uh, here at the 50%. You see price opened up here. It ran up to just above the 50% and then sold off from there. So, you know, this could have been a good day trade for you here. You know, if you wanted to take a, a quick short here up at 1,111, 1, you know, because then it got rejected down to... Uh, 1,000, just below 1,090. Okay, and then on the next day, we opened up here. Looks like we ran up again and then sold off from that same level. And then the next day, kind of uh, gapped up, or not gapped up over, but just kind of cleared right up over it. All right, let's get rid of this here. Okay. So this looks like a good area as well here so again we took oh, we took the swing high here took the swing high here to the swing low here and then looks like we actually closed above it and then the next day sold off big time six six percent in one day so sold off from 1061 down to just above 1000 so you know it, it obviously it found a little bit of support at this level because the next day we gapped up over it and then ended up closing at 1017 so up a little bit on the day about 17 points um, and then the next day sold off below that um, obviously there's a lot of support here on Tesla in this 900 area here we actually hit the most recent low was what was that 886 which was just just below this gap fill right here okay um you know I, these gap fills are great plays and honestly once this is kind of kind of a fake out here because obviously when you honestly when you see these gap fill plays they they tend to get filled so you know it entered it down here and you would expect it to get filled down here at the 909 level right um now if you were patient on it you know maybe with like a put debit spread the trade would have worked out great in your favor and, and that's kind of why i like to do spreads more so than naked options um you know because if you were patient and you entered it on the gap fill here um i could have put in you know like a 900 by 920 put debit spread um, it would have, you know, caught some heat here because it would have ran up, uh, you know, almost a hundred points and then it sold off big time, uh, from 994 down to 921. And then again, uh, it actually gapped down the next day to 945 and then ran up as high as, uh, 960 and then closed the day at around 932, right? And then the next day gap down right and then even closed below the gap so it was looking pretty bearish here right um and looked like maybe it was going to test uh some of these lower levels uh, down here maybe down at 877 even um but it did it did end up finding support right here at what was that level 886 and then bouncing up from there and it just kept going all the way up to 1118 so that i mean that was quite the move if you caught that here okay again here's another fibonacci spot right here swing high swing low okay tesla ran up to just above the 50% retracement and closed above it, not quite at the 618 retracement, um, and then ran all the way back below this trend line. So big sell-off here, 6.75% down on the day. And then it just kind of, again, bounced at this level here, like I had pointed back earlier. We had to switch over to the hourly chart. Um, just kind of bounce from one of those like smaller levels and then bounce right back up to this trend line so again we'll see where tesla opens up on tuesday um 
you know, we might get a run up heading into earnings, which is January 26. So, um, you know, Tesla does tend to run up heading into earnings. So my, my lean is slightly bullish on Tesla. Uh, we'll just, we'll just have to see how it goes. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, hopefully you learned a little bit about how to plot, uh, resistance support trend lines and uh fibonacci I'll, I'll do another one in a little bit more detail um possibly at a later date you know there's just a lot to cover in one video so uh all right guys have a good weekend